Osaka is on high alert. Over 32,000 police officers have come to the venue of the G20 summit from all over the country, and many main traffic routes into the city are in lockdown. All public school students have two days off, and residents are asked to refrain from using cars and going out if not necessary. In the major stations, coin lockers and garbage bins are sealed off to counter terrorist attacks. And security is ramped up at key locations, close to where the heads of state will be staying. I'm from Osaka, and I really hope that everything goes down safely. I'm proud to have the G20 summit here. The sirens are a bit much. I have a young child. My baby hasn't been able to take a proper nap in a while. <laughs> Usually bustling, attractions like parts of Osaka Castle Park and the inside of the castle are closed off to the public, since part of the summit is to be held inside the grounds. Contrary to the G20 summits held in Argentina and Germany in the last years, there haven't been any major protests here in Osaka. I've talked to organizers of a protest on Sunday and they estimated that only about 200 people came. And that's compared to thousands in Argentina last year and tens of thousands in Hamburg in Germany in 2017. Overall, the city is expecting 30,000 visitors over the course of the weekend. All right, I'm joined now by DW correspondent Max Hoffman, who is in Osaka, Japan, covering the summit there. Max, a lot of ground to be covered by the world leaders uh, there. What can we expect from this summit? Indeed, a lot of ground to be covered. And traditionally, you know, these G20 summits are about promoting multilateral trade. And the main instrument to do that is a declaration that the leaders need to accept at the end and that is prepared by so-called Sherpas. They've been doing that now since Sunday here in Osaka. And we're hearing things aren't going too well. Although the Japanese presidency is really trying to put the focus on those topics that are afterwards in the declaration, there are so many uh, important topics on the sidelines. Just take Iran, for example, or the, well, the Chinese-American uh, trade conflict that the Japanese presidency indeed is afraid that uh, all the attention will be steered away from, from their focus. And maybe that in the end, uh, there won't even be a declaration on the table. At least the last G20 summits, for example, in Buenos Aires at the end of last year, have always been extremely difficult because of that. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, talk uh, about President Trump. Of course, uh, all eyes on him. Uh, during G20 summits uh, like the one in Osaka right now, he's often been at odds with uh, other uh, leaders uh, who were there. Is there a sense that he will dominate the summit as well? Well, so far, he's already tweeted, uh, you know, a couple of things that are worrisome for some of the countries. Uh, the, the bottom line of what he's always saying, it's always been the same message, really, is that America is being treated unfairly by its trade partners. And the latest victim of one of the tweets here was, was India, but also Germany is also mentioned in these. And the G20 summits where I have been with uh, Donald Trump, indeed, he's always uh, managed to overshadow this this hard work, which is, you know, not as not as uh, offensive maybe to some uh, as what uh, Trump does in his tweets. So there's a real danger here that the same thing will happen, especially because you have uh, the two biggest economies in the world, the United States of America and China, uh, teetering on the edge of a full blown trade war. All right, and I just have 20 seconds left, Max. What are the chances that the Chinese and American leaders will overcome their differences during this G20 summit in Osaka? They'll have a bilateral meeting on Saturday, President Xi of China and President Trump of the United States. Some have said, we've had media reports, that uh, Trump is ready to have a truce there and back off of additional tariffs that he wanted to slap on uh, Chinese goods. But you can never be really be sure. Just take the last summit in Buenos Aires. After that, he was very positive. So he said... China and the U.S. would work out a deal, but then really exactly the opposite happened. So in this case, it's really not the words that count, but the work that's done afterwards and the actual agreement that might or maybe not uh, be negotiated. Max Hoffman reporting from Osaka. Thank you.